There's something about TOG2. It's the biggest, heaviest vehicle in our entire collection. Nowadays, it's one of our most popular exhibits. And it was, of course, a complete and total failure. As the only survivor of a failed programme, it played no part in the war that saw its creation. In fact, it's amazing that it survived at all. For many years, it sat here in a quiet corner of the museum alongside other failures such as Excelsior and Valiant. And there it sat, ignored by everybody, until something amazing happened. And yet it just has such charm and character. It's a cult following since. And it's not really Tog that wins. wonderful a machine. <laughs> it is dearly loved by so many people. Tog is love and Tog is life. Everybody wants to be friends with it. Tog's are the party tank. Everybody loves the you Tog. You do not get this in any other so tank. So what is it about the Tog? Tog is quite happy if victims come to Tog. Hi there. So I've been asked to explain the origins of my love for the Tog 2 tank. And it's quite a simple answer. Um, I wasn't even aware that the tank existed until it was introduced into the game World of Tanks. And the first time I ever saw TOG2 was in the game World of Tanks. And I can remember it clearly because I and everybody else on my team, when we saw this thing, we completely forgot about even attempting to fight the enemy. And instead everybody just drove their tanks in circles around the TOG. <laughs> just kind of marveling at its it's sheer, majestic, unbridled, eccentric British majesty. We couldn't believe that such a thing had ever actually existed. And of course it did, and in fact still does, because they have one, the only one, at the Tank Museum in Bovington. And just the, the sheer impracticality of the machine endeared it to me. I mean, it was a machine that was designed to win the First World War just in time for the Second World War. <laughs> it was... It's possibly one of the worst tanks ever made, and yet it just has such charm and character uh, that it is dearly loved by so many people. And that is how I first learned of the TOG 2, and why I love it as much as I do. I was going to tell you a joke about the TOG, but it was too long. It was designed for a war that never was going to happen, because they thought that there'd be a, a new Western Front between the Maginot Line and the Siegfried Line, which is where this tank was going to play about. But in fact, it had been designed for a war that had been over for 20 years by the time they got round to building it. So it was a complete waste of time, waste of resources and everything. Far too big and far too clumsy to use as a fighting tank. Unfortunately, TOG not very fast. So TOG was designed by the same design team who had been central in First World War tank design. It was built by the same company who made Little Willy, the world's first ever tank. Work began in earnest by the old gang in September 1939, but with the advent of Blitzkrieg and fast-moving panzer divisions, it became clear that the Second World War would not witness the kind of stalemate that we saw in the first. Now, over an extended period, various design changes were made to the TOG to keep trying to bring it up to date. But with the continuous evolving of warfare, coupled with successful designs like, like uh, Cromwell, Sherman, uh, and other sort of modern tanks, TOG proved to be continuously obsolete. And eventually the project was abandoned in 1944. TOG came to the museum in the 1950s from a British Defence Research Unit, and it sat outside before being brought indoors in the late 1980s. Now, its tremendous size, weight and scale means that moving this vehicle is no easy feat. And to put it in its current location required the combined services of a Chieftain Armoured Recovery Vehicle with a huge amount of washing up liquid. And that's how it got to where it is today. But that wasn't the end of the story. TOG does not have time for artillery. The TOG has been in World of Tanks longer than some people have been playing. Relatively unknown to many tank enthusiasts and gamers, once it was put in World of Tanks it became a huge hit and it's developed a bit of a cult following since. It's a very unique playstyle in that it has a huge amount of hit points, a very large profile and high rate of fire gun. It doesn't really use finesse to get victory but more just bully your opponents through sheer brawling power. 
Uh, enemies love it because it's easy to hit and your allies love it because they get to hide behind you from enemies shooting at them. And yeah, that it's a very simple tank in just the game. Uh, speaking of the cult following, it's become much like Marmite has. Either you'll love it or you'll hate it for its type of playstyle. And it's just, yeah, Tog is love and Tog is life. As I say, they, they did say it was difficult to steer, and I don't believe that for a minute. There's so much of this tank behind the turret, going back for miles, it seems. My name's Andrew Hills, and I've been asked by the Tank Museum at Bovington to give a short defence of Tog 2. Why have they asked me? Well, I'm the guy who wrote the book on the work of the Special Vehicle Development Committee, as the official name for the old gang. Why did I choose to dedicate several years of work to that? Well, because it's a mechanically fascinating vehicle. For example, the driver could move around at speeds of up to 12 miles an hour off-road. That's speeds equivalent to a vehicle like the Panzer IV, a medium tank. Add to that the fact that it can blast through defences and obstacles like barbed wire, otherwise impenetrable to contemporary British tanks. And that's an impressive vehicle, especially when you consider it weighs over 70 tonnes. Why is it so big? Well, that's easy. It was designed by criteria set by the military at the end of 1939 for a vehicle which had to be able to cross a 16 foot wide trench without bridging equipment. And you just can't do that unless your tank is very long. It's that high because the only engine powerful and available enough was a large marine diesel engine and it's that shape to make manufacture easier. Add to this the fact that it had to be immune to enemy anti-tank guns and carry gun capable of smashing German concrete bunkers and you have a virtually impossible set of criteria, yet these men achieved it. The TOG-2, in fact, marks a significant milestone for British tank technology. Torsion bar suspension, hybrid drive, modular construction, a giant gun, whether it's the 28 or 17 pounder. For sure, it's not a handsome tank, but it is a magnificent piece of work, showing the brilliant engineering efforts of men like Sir Albert Stern, Sir Harry Ricardo, Sir Walter Wilson, Sir William Tritton and others. The fact that these men were old is irrelevant. The fact that they built the near impossible is not, and that's why TOG-2 is important. For sure, it's not without problems, but what these men achieved was incredible, creating a vehicle superior to the Churchill, and dare I say, even the famous German Tiger. Much like Marmite has, either you'll love it or you'll hate it. Whichever the side of the debate you fall on, an experiment like TOG really exemplifies the value of a museum like this one, because without the existence of the Tank Museum, there would be no reason to preserve this vehicle, and it would simply have gone to scrap. It didn't fight in the 20th century's most significant conflicts. It never saw service or action. And according to David Fletcher, the only reason it was preserved was its sheer idiosyncrasy and quirkiness. There was simply nothing else like it in existence, and that made it worth holding on to for the Tank Museum. And its survival and its preservation meant they had the opportunity to become famous through World of Tanks. And legions of fans have come to visit the tank here in Bovington, have begun to debate the nature of armoured warfare. And because of that interest, because of that engagement, we will continue to preserve this bizarre tank for generations to come. <laughs> So we're back again. Back again, and I think it'll be very, you've been in a lot of trouble, David. You didn't just mention some of the TOG merchandise. So if you go on our shop, go to follow to the top, there, there is a plethora of t-shirts, witty and not so witty ones, um, all to do with TOG. You can buy your fridge magnet, you can buy, you name it. If you're a TOG fan, that's the place to go to. And it's also one of those tanks, I know we, we talked about a little earlier on, the where the game has brought interest in that tank again, you know, back to this idea of when I first came here, Tog, Tog was always going to be a big and impressive tank. And it's actually in our Tamir Hall, you saw the photograph of it there being moved. That used to be the front of the museum. And quite frankly, when Mr. Tamir, the model maker, sponsored having that hall built many moons ago, um, the tank was inside, you know, it was just literally left there and the roof built over the top of it, that big. But another tank that there's, again, has enormous amounts of interest now because of the game is Tortoise. And that's another tank we'll see a little bit later on where those vehicles that 
because of the level of interest across some of the more obscure, the, the wacky, the bigger, the, the first, the, all these ones and those paper yeah. tanks as well that weren't getting built, that's where it's brought an interest that just wasn't there. I just, certainly in my time, I didn't see before. And we've got a couple of questions actually for you, David. Um, one from Christian on YouTube. Is the gun on TOG 2 a 17 pounder? Uh, it is on currently, but TOG's another one of those vehicles that goes through a number of iterations. Um, you starts off with, you know, you can see those pictures, Matilda turret, all sorts of things, two pounds. Um, but yes, at the moment, TOG has got a 17 pounder on with that big slab sided turret that was being designed really that, uh, that goes on the Challenger tank, A30 yeah. tank later. So, yeah. uh, and another question, Casper uh, from Facebook, uh, again, TOG2, and I love this question. I hope it's going to be a good answer for this, David. Can we restore to running condition? Yeah, we'll have it ready for you for tomorrow. <laughs> no problems at all. We'll have it running around outside. It's, um, it is a major, major, major undertaking. And maybe at some point later on we'll talk about, again, do go to, I mean, I was just, just looking at various things we're trying to promote here. We do a question and answer session for our patrons, and uh, there's a number of these issues come up time and time again. And you can imagine the, the topic about, you know, why, what's worth returning to running order, what are the costs, the issues involved. We're going to see a tank in a moment that uh, we recorded for the public, how that restoration went, uh, all those are things. Gut feeling, quick answer, no, you're not going to see TOG running around because we're going to need a much bigger arena. Um, we're going to need an awful lot of money for doing things like that, which is why, um, just to give you a little bit of optimistic hope, if you keep buying things from our shop or joining our patron scheme, we'll be able to restore all those other ones that are already on the list that we've got to get done. So come on, David, if there was discussion about renovating the mouse, surely you can renovate a TOG uh, too, uh, don't you? Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that one, will we? But that's that, not a vehicle at our museum, of course, there, so... Um, so yes, yeah, so looking at that, but do please go and have a look if you, if you are interested, if you're big TOG guys, we have got some great TOG merchandise out there, so you'll be doing your, uh, your duty by buying one of those t-shirts. We are a charity here at the Tank Museum, so if you can support us, please do. Consider joining our Patreon scheme or becoming a member of the Friends. Any donations will go directly towards the Tank Museum and its activities.